Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Today we have an unboxing from Tanner at Medieval Serpents. Tanner and I completed a trade. So let's uh, get this get this box open. Take a look. Pretty excited for this. I do like doing trades, and if you're interested in a type of isopod that I have, and you have an isopod that I don't have that I can keep, then, you know, it's, it's worth trying. I mean, you can contact me and see how that goes. Um, I'm certainly open to discussing it. <laughs> I like that. Yep, trading isopods is often the way to go. So, let's get this open. Nice. Hmm. It's very nicely packed here. All right. Now, before we get into these, I just want to thank my patrons at Patreon. You really helped me do a lot of things on the channel that I couldn't do without you. I'm really excited to see that the Aquamax Patreon family is growing. And the more patrons I have, the uh, more I'm able to do for you. I love to share what I learn with you and uh, my experiences with the marvelous creatures of this planet. So if you'd like to help support Aquarimax for as little as a dollar a month, please click the link that I'll put at the end of the video and in the description. And now let's check these out. Now, ooh, as you can see, it says 24 plus high expression Punta Cana. Now, let me show you some of my Punta Canas. Now, mine are absolutely awesome. I mean, I love them. But as you notice, there are basically wild types in there. A small number of them come out expressing as wild types. And then there are others that have varying degrees of metallic coloration. In some cases, it's just thin lines that are uh, kind of lining the perionites and pleonites on the, the body surface, the, uh, the dorsal surface, I guess you'd say. And in other cases, it's a lot more, uh, it covers more of the body and it's a really attractive look. I like the metallic sort of coppery or gold look to it. It's amazing. But all of my Punta Canas are either, you know, they express as wild types or they have this um, metallic sort of coloration. But Tanner has been working on these high expression Punta Cana. He's been selectively breeding them and for a couple of years now, and he's got some fantastic things going on. So I thought it would be really great to get some of these as well. Um, I saw a, pictures, a picture of his, a photo of his on, I think it was Instagram, and was just blown away by the variety and intensity of color in his Punta Canas that he had been working with. Even, even the Punta Cana stock that he started with was more variable than mine. And, you know, sometimes you get genetic bottlenecks in the hobby and whatnot. It's very possible that since I started with only 10, that um, I was just missing some of the uh, genetics uh, that he had when he got his initial stock. And so uh, that is, that is, is very possible that that's what happened here. And so having worked with these for a while, he's come up with some really interesting variations. Some that look a lot like the ones that I have, but others that look very, very different indeed. So now let's, let's take these out individually and take a look at the variations that he's got. Here is the bin I have prepared for their arrival. And let's take a look at some of these. Oh, look at that. Got a pied individual. That's fun right there. That's fantastic. Now, some people might ask, well, has this one just molted or something like that? Because isopods have biphasic molts. Well, they'll molt one part of the body and then another. That's not the case here. Isopods do indeed have a biphasic molt, but they do not um, turn white prior to the molt. The, uh, the exuvium or the, the molted skin is white, but the body uh, is basically 
very close to the same color as the rest of it. See, I have nothing like this at all, like this one, in my uh, Punta Canas. It looks a little bit more like what I have in my, uh, my high yellow from Britain. A little bit more like that, but I have nothing like these, so this is great. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm having trouble with the camera a little bit, just, um, wow. Look at the variety on that one. That's, that's pretty cool. I like it. I like that a lot. There we go. I do want to keep it in focus if at all possible. So there's one. There's the other individual that looked a lot, a lot like that one. But even there's some variation there though, of course. There's those two in there. Oh, this one's nice and highly marked. Sorry, I had some technical difficulties for a moment there. Let's see. Oh, that's nice. There's a, a different look on that one. Again, I don't have anything. Ooh. Drop that one. Here it is. Anything in my Punta Canas that looks like that. Completely different markings. I would say. Look at these. There's that, that pied individual again that keeps eluding me. I'm going to take out some of the moss. It's nice I can just add this moss to uh, my existing hydration station. One of the several advantages of shipping in moss. There's, I think that's the one I was looking at before. Very high expression in terms of markings. Somewhat similar to my night gold strain. I love the fact that Punta Cana is a locality. In other words, uh, they're natural. It's not a morph that has been selectively bred, although these have been selected for. Uh, but the locality, Punta Cana, it occurs naturally. It's this is they they have a lot of variety or polymorphism in them in the wild, and so we can experience that. Uh, kind of a lot of variety with just one one locality of isopod. There are a couple of others like that. Armadillo in Bulgaria also has the uh, St. Lucia or Santa Lucia locality that is somewhat similar. Uh, Porcelio Levis has the uh, California mix. Oh wow, that is a gorgeous one right there. Look at that. Oh, that's really beautiful. What else do we have here? Just look at this variety. They're all so different. I love it. It's pretty fabulous. That one's definitely got some metallic going on there. And they all look so nice. Well, that's a fun one. Nice orange there. I went ahead and sent me about 24. I traded. I sent him some Armadillidium vulgari uh, T negative um, albinos. They're the, the rarer one in the hobby. The T positive albinos are a little bit more common. The T negative uh, albinos remind me of butter with their coloration. That's what I always think of anyway. And that's what I sent him. I, I just barely had some available and sent him some. They have since arrived, and he said they're doing fine, so that's excellent. Nice quantity of moss in here, I like that. What do we got here? Oh, look at the color on that one, that's fun. I'd call that a red one. 
And though I do have partial color blindness, I think that's what I'd call that. It's a really nice, really nice color on that one. I am very pleased with the variety I'm getting here. So this one looks a bit more like a lot of the Punta Canas that I have, something like that. That's most of mine look a lot like that. There's a, wow, really, really nice variety in here, Tanner. Thank you. Getting down to the, the bottom, there's a few more in there, as well as some bits of carrot, which I'm sure they appreciated on the trip. Oh, my goodness, I dropped one. It had an isopod on it, and that was rude of me, but also unintentional. So there we go. What have we got? Here. Oh, there's that's a really nice pattern on, on there. I do have a, some in mind that look a lot like that, but it's one of my favorite Punta Cana expressions, and I think the color on that one's a little bit different from what I have, so that's great. Very cool. And another nice thing is that um, Punta Cana, because they are, are polymorphic, just because uh, they look a certain way, doesn't mean they're going to produce young that look a certain way. So I will very likely get offspring from these that look nothing like any of the parents. That's something I really, really love about Punta Cana. You never know what you're going to get. And it's, some people call them jelly beans, gem mix in Santa uh, Lucia also get that uh, appellation because of the variety that you find in them. But Gem mix is a mix of morphs, and like I mentioned before, both Santa Lucia and Punta Cana are localities. I believe Santa Lucia is from an area in Spain, and uh, I know that Punta Cana is from an area in the Dominican Republic. So both very different origins. The interesting thing is, the ones in the Dominican Republic probably uh, coincide their origins in the Dominican Republic probably result from an introduction from uh, Europeans. So it hasn't been all that long, a few hundred years maybe since they've been there, which is interesting. All right, that looks like everybody's in there. I am really excited about these. Tanner, thank you for sending these. And thank you everyone for watching. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell so you don't miss my next video.